Dear students, in this section we are going to learn application of the parallel axis theorem and here we learn this application through one example that is calculating moment of inertia of a cylinder about one of its end. Here we are interested to calculate moment of inertia about y axis. We know moment of inertia of this cylinder about x axis is mr square by 2 right and which is same as the moment of inertia of a equal mass disc having equal radius. The moment of inertia of the disc about the symmetrical axis passing through the center perpendicular to the plane equal to mr square by 2 which is same as the moment of inertia of this cylinder about x axis ok. So, let us make the diagram to the next piece. This is the diagram. Here we are considering the mass is uniformly distributed over the volume. Okay. The length of the cylinder is L, radius is R. So, volume of the cylinder should be equal to mR square multiplication L. And as mass is uniformly distributed, that means the density of this cylinder should be equal to rho equal to mass divided by volume that is m divided by pi R square L. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will select one of uh, elemental disc. You can consider this cylinder is made of a number of the disc placed coaxial with x axis. So, we are going to select one disc. So, let us select this disc. Okay. We have selected a disc at a distance x from this end. This is the disc. Okay. Let us consider the thickness of this disc is equal to dx. This is the thickness. Okay. Now, you can say the volume of this elemental disc should be equal to pi r square multiplication dx. We are considering this disc as a very small elemental cylinder. So, we need to calculate the mass of this disc. Mass of this disc should be equal to the volume of the disc multiplication density of the material of the cylinder. So, let us calculate the mass of the elemental disc dm. So, dm should be equal to density rho multiplication pi r square multiplication dx. This is the mass. Okay. Now, we can substitute the value of density that is m divided by pi r square l. So, this is the density. You can observe here this pi r square and pi r square will get cancelled. That means, mass of this elemental disk should be equal to m multiplication dx divided by l. This is the mass. Okay. Now, you know the moment of inertia of this elemental disc about the x axis that is m r square divided by 2 and you know the moment of inertia about its diametrical axis about this axis that is equal to m r square divided by 4. So, let us write the moment of inertia of this elemental disc about the diameter axis. Okay. Mass is dm, radius is r. So, di equal to dm r square divided by 4. Okay. This is the moment of inertia about the diameter, about this green color dotted line. Now, you can observe this diameter is passing through the center of mass of this disc and here we are interested to calculate moment of inertia about the y axis. So, here we can apply parallel axis theorem. Okay. So, let us apply the parallel axis theorem. Let us write the moment of inertia about the diametrical axis dmr square by 4. Now, we are going to apply a parallel axis theorem. Okay. For applying parallel axis theorem, we can observe, we know the moment of inertia about the diametrical axis which is passing through the center of mass of this uh, disc that is equal to dmr square by 4 and distance of this parallel axis that is the y axis from this diametrical axis equal to x. So, we can write diy that is moment of inertia about the y axis equal to di plus dm multiplied by x square. x is the separation between these two parallel axes. So, this is the moment of inertia about y axis of this disc that is the elemental disc. Now, we can write this di value dmr square divided by 4 and this is dm multiplied by x square. Okay. Now, we can substitute the value of dm. dm we have calculated. This is equal to capital M dx divided by L. So, let us substitute these values like this. Okay. Now, we have 
calculated the moment of inertia of the, this disc about the y axis. So, we know the moment of inertia having the additive property. So that means, if we have a number of a disc placed coaxial with the x axis, that means moment of inertia of the all disc will be addition of all disc, that is the integration of the moment of inertia of dy. So, moment of inertia of total cylinder about the y axis that will be equal to integration of dy. Okay. So, this is the integration of this function. We can observe here this m, m r square by 4 l is a constant term that is why we have written outside the integral. Similarly, m by l is also the constant term we have written outside the integral and limit is 0 to small l. Okay. So, let us write the function to the next space. This is i equal to m r square by 4 l and 0 to l dx and this is the second term. So, let us write this function. Okay. Now, integration of dx equal to x. So, after placing the limit, this will be a small l and here the integration of x square will be equal to x cube divided by 3. After placing the limit, this will become l cube divided by 3. Now, we can calculate it l and l will get cancelled here, l and l will get cancelled, here will be l square. So, this value will be equal to here m r square divided by 4 and here is m l square divided by 3. So, this is the moment of inertia of this cylinder about one of its ends or in this diagram about y axis. Okay?